Lawmakers from both sides of the aisle commemorated International Holocaust Remembrance Day on Friday, including this one. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the grandmother of one of my DC staffers who is a 93-year-old survivor of Auschwitz and is also one of the few survivors of her family who was tragically lost at the hands of Nazi murders. Anti-Semitism is a plague in this nation and it is undoubtedly up to us to ensure this kind of tragedy is never to be seen again. So just as a reminder, George Santos lied about being Jewish and not only that, he also lied about his grandparents escaping the Holocaust. I've seen how socialism destroys people's lives because my grandparents survived the Holocaust. For a lot of people who are uh, descendants of World War II refugees or survivors of the Holocaust, a lot of names and paperwork were changed in, in name of survival. So I don't carry the family last name. That would have been Zabrowski. That is, it's amazing, I'm, but, but it, it's, it's just in the context of this very sober and somber moment of Holocaust remembrance. I mean, There's no, no place shame. Go. Exactly. I, I actually had in my office the House floor camera up, and when I, I was not alerted to that he was going to take the floor, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, no, he's not going to really do this yeah, right like, now. Uh, I f he's just trolling us uh, at this point. Um, so, yes, no shame is, is one thing here. But uh, for all the distraction that is George Santos, I do think the campaign finance piece of this mm. is the piece we should keep our eyes on because it is clear Kevin McCarthy and, and uh, House Republicans are not interested in doing anything about Santos. But if indeed there is a criminal investigation into his campaign finances that emerges with an indictment, that will change the calculus. That will, all of a sudden, that will change Kevin McCarthy's behavior, uh, one would imagine, as it relates to George Santos. So I would keep our eyes on, on what's happening with his finances. It's pretty much the only thing that might change the calculus because the unwillingness, particularly on the House Republican side, is so high. I mean, this, George Santos, I mean, the audacity is kind of stunning on every level. Uh, to your point about the shamelessness of this act, but I think also we see someone who is reveling in their newfound fame. I think yeah. it speaks to a, a new type of Congress we have on our hands where we think that there are <clears throat> some figures who are there for the serious business of legislating, yeah. but there are other figures who are there for the very unserious business of just trying to become a celebrity. Well, yeah. here's the thing about being on Capitol Hill. You're not going to escape the reporters. Uh, Manu Raju doing the Lord's work, trying to get some answers out of George Santos. Why did you amend your FEC report to say sure, 500? No, 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 let's, let's make it very clear. I don't amend anything. I don't touch any of my FEC stuff, right? So don't be disingenuous and report that I did because you know that every campaign hires fiduciary. So I'm not aware of that answer. And we'll have an answer for the press regarding the amendment from yesterday. Well, where, where, where was the, what was the source of your funds, sir? What was the source of that money? Mr. Santos, you listed the wrong name of a treasurer. Why did you list the wrong name of your treasurer on your campaign finance forms? I'll have a conversation with you when you become a better honest reporter. I'm asking you directly. You're honest it's a reporter and you know that. Now, this is all good and, and fun until the feds come calling. Right, yeah, and then Department of Justice investigation, right, and the FBC is looking into this. I mean, I think that that totally changes the calculation. I, I think that everything we've seen to date has been relatively um, disingenuous, but I would also argue that we've entered an era of politics where a lot of politicians lie about things. That being said, you actually had Donald Trump, what was it, yesterday, saying that George Santos told a lot of whoppers. And so when you have uh, the former president, who uh, was known not to be the most honest, uh, calling you out for your level of honesty, there does perhaps, you know, elevate that situation. But I agree with everyone here at this table. I don't think it changes, the, nothing changes the calculation for House Republican leadership unless there's an actual investigation. Yeah, and, and this is all despite the fact that according to a new poll out this week, uh, his constituents want him to go. 64% uh, of Democrats, 49% of Republicans, and 59% of independents, New York State voters, say he should resign. Meanwhile, uh, Alex, just listen. This is Kevin McCarthy responding to questions about why he won't do something, really anything, to try to at least cordon off George Santos from being a member in good standing in the House of Representatives. I try to stick by the Constitution. The voters elected him to serve. If there is a concern and he has to go through the ethics, we'll let him move through that. The voters of his district have elected him. He is seated. He is part of the Republican conference. You know why I'm standing by him? 
because its constituents voted for. And as former Speaker Paul Ryan put it just a few weeks ago, he was elected but based on a fraudulent candidacy, it seems. Look, I think it's not totally indefensible as an argument to say that the guy got elected and I don't particularly want him to be elected, and, but here we are, and so uh, let him participate in the business of the body. It's very hard to make that argument in a convincing way when you're also trying to kick Ilhan Omar off the uh, Foreign Affairs Committee because you object to uh, elements of her, her worldview, right, that she was also elected by uh, her constituents in, in, in Minneapolis. And so if you, if you take the view generally that you know, the voters are the ultimate arbiters of all this and we have to be deferential to them. You need to sort of stick to that. I will say this is totally characteristic of Kevin McCarthy to uh, make decisions based on the most short-term calculus possible and then make a different set of decisions whenever that calculus changes. But look, he needs that vote right now or he thinks he needs that vote right now. He doesn't want a special election on Long Island under these circumstances. But the problem is you are going to need to win that seat again in two years mm -hmm. one way or another. <laughs> and if George Santos just sort of strings you along until he actually winds up running for re-election, that's a bigger headache. Or if the voters of that district see you and your party as coddling this guy who's just an unbelievably offensive character, then even if he doesn't run for re-election, good luck to your next candidate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, his colleagues uh, among New York Republicans are basically making that argument. They're like, we need this guy gone because he's hurting all of us. And also, we should note, um, he is on Capitol Hill trying to make friends, having a bit of a tough time uh, because other members kind of don't want to be associated with him uh, because uh, I think everybody recognizes that they could be kind of tarnished by an association with someone who, frankly, they don't even know who he is.